We're here today at the beautiful Wilson's Falls Trail in Bracebridge for our What's Cooking event with Chef Michael Hunter. Uh, he is co-owner and head chef at Antler, Antler Kitchen and Bar in Toronto. Um, he grew up in the Caledon area, loves to forage, and he is an avid hunter with his crossbow. Uh, he is here today to take approximately 30 people on a hike and show them what they can gather while they are out for a hike. So one thing that, uh, I said, wait for everyone to catch up. Uh, one thing we can talk about is goldenrod. Uh, something I was pretty uh, surprised you can actually eat. It's all edible, uh, very floral. Uh, it can be a little strong, so you don't need to use a lot of it, but I, uh, this year, was using it in a chutney. So we did a peach and goldenrod chutney. Um, there was vinegar, sugar, onions, lots of peaches, and it was more kind of like a condiment. We put on uh, pork chops, we put it on our charcuterie board. Um, just something fun to play around with that you wouldn't necessarily think of. Um, people often confuse it with ragweed or that it's an allergen, but it's actually not, as far as I've been told. So, Well, I grew up working in kitchens ever since I was 13 years old, and I grew up in nature, and I just started to really learn that uh, food and uh, wild mushrooms, things were growing all around. Uh, my home that I could eat and it just really um, excited me that I could find these things that weren't necessarily available in grocery stores um, that tasted really good. So uh, unfortunately we're a little late for this guy but this is uh, an elderberry uh, bush and you kind of see where these red stems are used to be full of berries but unfortunately the birds, birds get, to get to them before we do. So it's, it's actually interesting to see elderberry growing this high because normally I find it in the wetlands. Um, More of a shrub. Yeah, well, yeah, shrub and then even just, it normally likes wet feet. But the, the elderberry that has this, we call umble shaped flower head, um, will have black, black berries. Um, that's why this one's called the black elderberry compared to the other species we have in Muskoka is the red elderberry, mm -hmm. which blooms first thing in the spring and then has red berries that are on, we call it a raceme, but it's basically, if you picture the way grapes grow, mm -hmm. that's called a raceme. So red berries on that raceme, mm -hmm. that's not the elderberry we want to use in Muskoka, but the black elderberry that's bore on what we call an umbel, like an umbrella, mm -hmm. um, that's our elderberry that we use. And do you, what do you do with elderberries, Michael? Um, we, I like to make jams and preserves and, and things like that that we put on our charcuterie plate or our cheese plate. Uh, we do French toast as well, so we'd either do some kind of elderberry jam or a wild blueberry jam mm -hmm. with those. And they're great in cocktails. You can muddle them, uh, shake it with some vodka, and uh, have a good time. I'm a forager and an artisan food producer here in Muskoka. Um, I've been having a conversation with Michael for a few months now um, about getting some of our products into his restaurant in Toronto called Antler. Um, so as two foragers, uh, we started talking about plants and he was mentioning that he was doing a plant walk up here in Muskoka, so I offered to come and help. Um, and so we came out and got to look at lots of different plants with a nice, nice group of people. Um, and it was really nice to actually be a local forager in the area because I got to actually introduce Michael to some of the, the northern plants that grow in this region. So, so even though he was leading the walk, he got to learn a few things and it was really nice to hear um, from him. Uh, has a very fine dining restaurant. Some of the really interesting ways that Michael uses some of the beautiful wild plants of this region uh, in his, his fine dining restaurant in Toronto. People are, are becoming more um, interested in, in where their food's coming from and eating healthy. Um, and it's just sort of fascinating to learn that, you know, I can, I can use these leaves from the cedar tree, um, you know, to make bitters or a tea or uh, sorbet with, um, you know, staghorn sumac that grows everywhere. It's actually full of vitamin C and really good for you. And it tastes a lot like lemon. You can make lemonade and season fish with it. Um, picked a little bit of mushrooms, uh, found a little bit of mushrooms. Uh, it's a bit late in the season, um, but we talked about things like bolites and chanterelles and saffron caps as well. It definitely takes a, a, a bit of time um, to get to learn, but between plants and mushrooms, we have a plethora of amazing different spices and foods that we can harvest from this region. And it's really just getting to know one plant at a time and learning which are the groups of plants or families of plants or mushrooms that are the safest ones to start with. So yeah, getting going on plant walks like the one today, getting some different field guides, you know, uh, field guides that focus on identification as well as ones that share uses. 
Um, and then just kind of taking time, getting to know species one at a time, and then incorporating them slowly into your everyday cooking. I find wild foods in our modern context are almost best approached to treat them like spices. You know, the way that you're using just little bits, and that's a really easy way um, to incorporate them into our modern food. Because to go out and forage an entire meal um, would be quite difficult in this landscape and take a lot of time. Um, but to incorporate, you know, little bits of, of pine into, you know, cooking that you're doing or using, you know, making teas from things, that's really practical um, and a really good way for people to get started.